Hi, I'm Joshua, and I'm an INTP, and first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for viewing this video. And uh, the topic of this video will be on personality. So, in this video, I would like to address my thoughts on what personality actually is, and give the best explanatory basis for why I think personality is what it is versus what many others uh, postulate and what some popular systems of uh, personality theory postulates. So first and foremost, I would like to say this, that um, I am not an advocate nor a believer in the blank slate model of cognition. And the blank slate model of cognition, as it's popularly known, is roughly this, that people come as blank slates, obviously, or empty vessels to where knowledge is poured into them, and they create themselves, or they create uh, neural pathways by way of experience, and the individual that you're looking at is merely a collection of their own experiences and whatever they have garnered from the environment in terms of their education uh, by way of experience. And I fundamentally don't agree with this. And um, here is why. Because it's quite obvious that, well, there's a, f a few reasons why. But the first uh, reason why is that it's quite obvious that the basic reflexes of the body and uh, the uh, neural and neural atomic system of the human being uh, to begin with are innate and are prepackaged, and we come with them. Your brain is just as much responsible for what your personality is as it is for your heartbeat, for uh, the movement of uh, soft muscle tissue, and uh, general gag reflexes, and um, all an other number assortment of reflexes and when babies are born they're essentially a collection of reflexes in pre-ready packaged action structures and uh, most of their other systems are myelinated but they do have enough of themselves myelinated or booted up to essentially move their mouths uh, dart their eyes around and suck on things and if you tap on the side of a baby's face, it will begin to move its head around and try and get its tongue because their tongues are highly myelinated and wired up and the instant they're born to suck things. So what that is supposed to mean and demonstrate is that human cognition and the very at the very basis is not up to just complete designed by any environmental influence but has a packaged based evolutionary structure that it comes with and there is a structure at which the human mind is uh, not the human mind as in the brain per se the mind not existing from the brain but as the brain itself the brain is structured in a certain way and we are what we are and we have the minds that we do have because we're human beings fundamentally. Uh, so this is where I start in saying that people aren't blank slates. Nextly, I would like to turn the attention and scope to research on uh, temperament in prenatal uh, history per se and just that it has been demonstrated at least that the amount of exposure to various neurochemicals and hormones a child receives uh, in the womb in various stages of their uh, development in their mother's womb greatly influences their proclivity to uh, character traits such as aggression or agreeableness. And they're things that can, and uh, neuroticism and um, being us. Uh, sanguine or calm and it seems that these things don't change and aren't 
varied very much as the uh, infant grows and people are who they are roughly temperament wise roughly by the ages of six and when you look at and also given that uh, and so it says that temperament also has its base patterns in the genetic material no genetics can't explain for be all of behavior and this is where I say I'm differing to me personality is not behavior and the way one acts or necessarily what one does but, but is what one is per se or what one can be by way of their existence and their basis I don't think that there is an infinite possibility for people to uh, become you do have a base structure to you when you come into the world by way of first being a human being next by way of having a temperament and I believe temperament is where personality arises from but if that is not uh, sufficient enough for one to uh, disavow the uh, blank slate model I will say this that other research shows that when you're looking at antisocial behavior and I don't mean antisocial as it's used uh, pop, uh, popularly but antisocial as in disruptive and uh, malevolent social behaviors such as uh, psychopathy and uh, sociopathism uh, those are antisocial personality disorders uh, you see that if the child, if there's just a pattern that if the child is not taught in some respects to be uh, social and uh, communicative and uh, playful with other children in terms of being able to share or uh, show empathy by those ages, if they're essentially not taught to be empathic by the age of three, there is not a good chance that they're going to learn it. And if they haven't been taught it by the ages of six, it almost seems as if they're a lost cause and they're down the river. It's not to say that sociopathism or, psych or psychopathy is completely genetic or is completely environmental, but it seems to be an interplay of both. But what is uh, duly noted uh, from what has been examined or at least... Uh, the patterns that have been demonstrated in that research is that three and six say more than the rest of the life of the individual is going to say and the same thing is true of IQ and the brain does not fully myelinate itself it means it doesn't fully insulate its hardware and come online and have the most uh, efficient um, patterns of transmitting uh, information until about the ages of 20 for women and about 25 for men so you can say an, uh, a 20 on average for people so in IQ at that point it seems that when you're trying to develop a child's uh, cognitive capacities the ages of 3, 6, 12 and 18 are the most salient the ones where you can do uh, the most gain and the ones where you can do the most retardation and damage because if uh, a child can, is uh, severely malnourished from the ages of three to six they you retard their IQ score you can retard their IQ scores by uh, way of uh, 10 to 15 points I mean that's significant and what's even more uh, significant than that is that you can't really take and move people's IQ uh, if you give them different batteries over and over again, not giving them the same batteries, but giving them different batteries over and over again. You can't really move it by a substantial amount of points. Let's say you can't take somebody who has an IQ of 60 and get them to an IQ of 40. It's you can't take extremes and knock them down to other extremes. You can take somebody roughly with an IQ of 20 and retard them by malnourishment, uh, but you can't get somebody with an IQ of 60, which is mentally handicapped, up to being um, considered 
uh, profoundly gifted. It's just there's a there's constraints for most things, and it tells me if there's constraints, real physiological constraints, not one by way of somebody's uh, choices or environments, but constraints that come by way of just genetic selection, then there is no blank slate. There is a predetermined, if you are upset with that word, pre-selected, if you're upset with that word, uh, general makeup that a person comes with. And that general makeup that the person comes with is by and large going to determine what the environment can act on in the first place and what patterns can be a behavior can be created uh, to begin with. I don't think you can get an infinite amount of behaviors out of a person because, for example, embodiment, being an embodied thing, you having the body you have, uh, honestly, is probably going to do more and uh, say more about who you become necessarily in your environment than uh, anything else. And it's your body and its makeup isn't anything that you really got to decide, nor your skin color or uh, cultural background. Uh, those things you can say that they are um, constructions if you want, but there's a biological basis for culture and uh, y you are your genetic blueprint essentially when you come out. And um, those things are going to heavily influence who you are, but your temperament is going to say how you uh, are even what you're willing to pay attention to, um, how confrontational you're willing to be, and a lot of other things. The environment is going to teach you a great deal, and it's going to teach you a multitude of things, and you're going to structure yourself and make yourself up out of what the environment teaches you, but you're making yourself up out of a palette of colors, if you will, that already pre-exist by way of your genetic inheritance and you being a homo sapien. By those means, personality is not a set of behaviors. It's not simply a set of behaviors, and it's not what you repeatedly do. Uh, it's your orientation to existence. And you can try and take and make it a metaphysical something, as many proponents of uh, different... Uh, personality theories like to do, I'm not a uh, spiritualist or a new ager or a metaphysical thinker. I think that metaphysics is a psychological phenomena and by way rests in uh, material existence. I think uh, that any cosmopoetic or mythopoetic uh, knowledge that we can have is by way of projection from the human psyche and is only there in extant by way of uh, the action of molecular structures. At bottom, I'm a materialist. I have room for metaphysics and I have room for a spiritual standpoint. And I think that those things are important and relevant given that the material existence we have also... Uh, derives in us an irrationality or creates in us an irrationality. We are fundamentally irrational beings, not in a pejorative sense, but meaning ones that do not behave mechanistically by way of just the base functions and needs and necessities of our existence. So I think that that is where all the things derive from, but I think they essentially derive are derived from us and the mind and not any great cosmo something. I think that the universe is ultimately indifferent towards mankind and human want and need. Now, I, I say all that to just say that the basis for my view on personality is one by way of uh, biology, neuroscience, and cognitive science, and I'm influenced in my analysis of it, 
and I will never state or postulate that it is all merely behavior, and that behavior counts for what one, uh, for what one's personality is. I don't think that at all. I think that it's a very shallow and uh, superficial understanding of what it is. Uh, neuronal pathways, the neuronal pathways that you can study are uh, have a great deal of multiplicity to them uh, in terms of human behavior. There are so many things that affect uh, behavior that are not at all conscious and aren't un and don't and aren't unconscious because of early childhood experiences, but are unconscious because they stem from the reptilian and the mammalian center of the brain. The they're part of the midbrain or the uh, posterior brain or the hypothalamus or the uh, amygdala, parts of the brain that don't have speech and word patterns, so you can't articulate them, but they're very much there, they're real, and they're running you to some extent, because human to be a human being, to me, and one definition is to be a rough amalgamation of competing biological drives that tend towards the same direction. You are a collection of things that is one entity, but you're a collection nonetheless and the brain is not this unified entity as people want to spontaneously accept it is. And so personality is not something, and even behavior is not something that is just uh, singular in its derivation and its uh, existence, but has a multiplicity to it, meaning that there are multiple structures that, can, that make up one's behavior and why even one takes on the patterns of behaviors that they take on and why certain people can't take on certain patterns of behaviors and why there are universal patterns of behaviors that people take on and why people make up different patterns of behaviors for different uh, biological needs per se that you can be uh, passive aggressive in your uh, social life but in your sexual life, you may not be that entity at all because of, by way of whatever sexual, initial sexual experience that you had that led you to orgasm, you're going to try and seek out and repeat that reward. So you're going to create a base network of behaviors to essentially find that or whatever pattern you set forth from that initial uh, dopaminergic experience and uh, the lack of recognition that dopamine uh, sort of drives uh, actions and goal oriented uh, pattern schemas is somewhat vexing to me and people's conception of personalities. I don't want to complicate the thing, but I just want to say that personality is not neuroses. That's too simple. Uh, it's, it's personality is not just someone's uh, behaviors. And personality to me is uh, not uh, mythological or uh, spiritual per se by way of its own existence. Personality is an expression of one's material existence and it says something fundamentally about the way one exists and what they are. You have limitations and it's showing you your limitations but not that you can be every representation of what it means to be human. Uh, you're not, I'm not a, a, a new ager or a Gnostic in believing that m there's anything divine about mankind in the sense that d I won't tell any person that you are a god. And I don't think that the uh, idea, I don't know why it's necessary to be a god in, in the first place, why it's not enough to be human. But I don't believe that this, there is just this universal, uh, not, I shouldn't say universal. I think there is the numinous in people. And I think there is something that is awe-inspiring and divine about people. Something that is transcendental and something that is sacred. And I think that the human experience is sacred in of itself. But uh, the other metaphysical things that are sort of... Um, smuggled in with those propositions and thoughts uh, I can't agree with. Uh, I'm not a Gnostic. 
And um, I would say moving from that, that uh, one's personality is the archetype, their archetypal self. Um, you get human consciousness and the collective unconscious from a uh, reiterative evolutionary process on, con on cognition and consciousness. Consciousness is a uh, manifestation of cognition. It is the bundling of uh, axons and neurons that produce the phenomena that we see and know and that is our own subjective experience. I'm never going to be one to say that there is no self. I think that that's stupid and that's probably the worst thing that uh, cognitive science has ever tried to come up with, uh, that there is no such thing as a self. There is a self and so long as it's one subjective experience in the phenomenological aspects of life. There is a phenomenological structure to what it means to be and to move through the world. And that's maybe not something we're licensed and privy to see right now by way of, of, of uh, observing anatomy, but it's one that's as fundamental and as true as the fact that one breathes. Uh, quite honestly, from uh, my perspective. Now, it's to say that the way one exists is their personality, and you can say that, uh, well, what is one's existence, and can't one's uh, mode of existence change? And I think that, no, the general representation or the general pattern of one's existence doesn't change. Um... You can redress things and rehash things, but it is still the same thing. And that may be just my introverted thinking, extroverted feeling axes bias that there really is only one you and there is only really one way that you exist. I think that people do go through traumas and people do uh, have schisms and people do create shadows and that there are patterns of neuroses that are uh, strapped on to one's conscious that bogs them down and keeps them from their archetypal self. But I don't think that archetypal self is God or God in man. I think it's if they're an INTP, it's an INTP. Or if they're an INFP, it's an INFP. Because I, you get people by way of sexual selection. People have sex to make other people and it's by way of reproduction that you even exist. There is a genetic and a biological structure for what you are and who you are. And that's at bottom who you are. You don't get anything else. Every little pattern you're looking at or every action and behavior that you're looking at is um, some strata of the complexity of the expression of genetic phenomena. It's not genetic phenomena in of themselves, but genes in the environment have a communication. And there is a dialectic between the two. And one is acting on one, and the other is acting on the other to get the person that you see. And the patterns of behavior is roughly just an amalgamation of these things. And other things that the environment is feeding them that they stack on top of one another to create reiterative loops and schematizations that you have a complex self. But the self comes down to essentially the archetype or whatever it is or whoever it is you're born as. But whoever it is you're born at wasn't some infinite numinous thing. Your material and the basis of your existence. There's nothing infinite about a material thing. If anything has dimensions, it's not infinite. Um, but it's to say that uh, personality, it is um, a very interesting thing, and uh, there's many ways that it can uh, play out and shape. But the um, basis of it and what it is essentially is temperament and uh, predetermined um,
behavioral schema and uh, biological drives. And um, that's what I think uh, personality is, uh, fundamentally. And um, whatever, com whatever complexity you see is uh, the... Um, I would say extrapolation and abstraction of already pre-ready-made structures. Uh, nature acts on what already exists, and it uh, can only re-purpose uh, something, but it doesn't make new things, essentially. And um, essentially, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, so that's my video on personality, and um, thank you for watching.